In this second video on uh, spatial data analysis, I'm going to talk about our, our second class of uh, spatial data, which is point reference data. And again, this is where data has some uh, value or attribute or covariate associated with it in addition to the spatial coordinates. Uh, but the, we're not considering uh, these points as having area. We're considering them to be uh, points. So the, the attribute is associated with a, a, a finite, you know, a, a specific location, not with, you know, an integral over some area. So it's not like a, a population data or, or uh, something like that. Um, it's also known as ge uh, geospatial data, and that reflects the fact that a lot of the techniques um, that that um, are used for point reference data originated in the uh, uh, in the geosciences. Uh, particularly in mining, uh, and, and mining is a great example of, uh, of a latent data problem. You, know, you can't see, when you're on the surface, you can't see you know, where deposits are under the surface, but you can you know, drill exploratory uh, holes down to take samples, uh, and then you're trying to you know, use those, those point data to interpolate where some specific resource is before you invest money into uh, expensive mines. And so the idea is you're usually envisioning this as a case where there's some underlying continuous attribute uh, and you're trying to sample from that underlying continuous attribute. Uh, there's often two aims to point reference data analysis. Uh, one is uh, that you're just interested in uh, the data itself, you know, you have some X's or some X's and Y's and you're interested in understanding the data and understanding the relationships uh, among your data, uh, but you need to account for the lack of independence in this data due to spatial proximity. So it's kind of analogous to where we ended up in time series analysis where, you know, you, you could have a process model uh, this is just a process model like we've talked about for the rest of the course, uh, but you need to uh, have a data model that accounts for uh, autocorrelation. So one, one of the aims with point reference data and acknowledging that most of our data uh, is point data, uh, but sometimes we need to account for the spatial locations and lack of independence. And in, in this version, it, you know, we're really treating uh, the spatial uh, nature of the data is almost a nuance that we need, uh, a nuisance that we need to account for. Uh, the other aim is, is to make uh, spatial predictions, uh, you know, where we're, the aim is to make some sort of map uh, interpolating between uh, locations. So we're using those point data to interpolate, and maybe we're interested in uh, that overall surface, or maybe we're just interested in, you know, filling in uh, information where we don't have it. So examples of point reference data are, are really uh, abundant in the earth and environmental sciences. Uh, so for example, you know, if I take a soil core, I can treat that as a point, and I might be interested in things such as soil moisture, soil nutrients, pH, texture, etc. Uh, a lot of atmospheric and ocean measurement data uh, taken from either uh, permanent sensor locations or uh, short-term sampling, you know, uh, a, a balloon or a, a, you know, a sensor being dropped off a boat. Um, you know, these are going to be uh, essentially point data. So surface meteorology, you know, temperature precip, et cetera, measuring CO2, pollutant concentrations, salinity, uh, you know, things like this are all associated with, you know, the field data when you collect these are essentially at a point, uh, not at, they don't really, you don't really measure temperature over an area uh, from ground sensors. And this is distinct from remote sensing, which actually does often, you know, uh, you know remote sensing effort, eff, uh, estimates of land surface temperature are for, a pixel or remote sensing estimates of you know CO2 are for a, you know a column uh, integral uh, some area associated with it, um, and then there's also cases where 
uh, the point data is actually uh, from an area, but the area being sampled is very small relative to the size of the domain. So, you know, for example, in, in my work and as a forest ecologist, we often have forest inventory plots that are, you know, on the order of, you know, you know, maybe seven to 10 meters across. And we've got them, you know, uh, spread out over the size of, of, you know, whole landscapes. So the size of the plot is really quite tiny relative to the size of the domain. And so we're interested in, in biological attributes such as biomass, abundance, presence, absence, species richness, or the presence of invasive species or diseases or things like that. Um, and so from the, the landscape scale, we can really can treat this plot data as, as point data. So here's an example of, of how we might visualize uh, um, geostatistical data, uh, point reference data, where we have XY locations, and then we have some attribute associated with those locations. In this case, I'm using the size of the symbol uh, to reference, um, you know, the magnitude of the effect. I might use color, I might use shape. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to visualize it, but you're getting the basic idea that, that it's not just the locations, the points that are, that are of interest. And it's, in this case, it's not even the, the, the randomness or over dispersed of the points is not of interest at all. What is of interest at all is this underlying pattern we see of, of low in the bottom left corner uh, and a gradient up to high along this uh, negative diagonal and then going back to low again uh, in the upper right quarter. So that spatial pattern, like I said, we might either be interested in interpolating and filling in that map or we might just be interested in analyzing this data and you know data points that fall along this diagonal are, or any diagonal are, are much more similar to each other than you'd expect by chance. And so we need to account for uh, the spatial pattern of the data. Things near to each other have similar attributes uh, re regardless of what their covariates are. So like with spatial data analysis, uh, with geospatial, sorry, like what we did in time series analysis, I'm gonna start by introducing uh, some methods for exploratory analysis. Uh, smoothing and detrending, autocorrelation, interpolation, uh, and creaking, uh, and with a particular emphasis on, on using our packages and, and particularly on a lot of the basic and built-in packages that are, are much more advanced packages to do all these things. And there's also ways to do them within uh, GIS as well. Um, and then, you know, ha after having covered the kind of exploratory analyses from a GIS, uh, spatial uh, perspective, we'll come back in later lectures uh, to talk about how we actually uh, take spatial uh, data and build that into our, our data models.